A three-week hamstring program would typically, in an ideal world, when things are going well, go through this format. So firstly, we want to get that diagnosis right. Uh, typically in the AFL, we leave this to the physiotherapists and the sports doctors. Um, they'll work off their clinical assessments as well as a scan to diagnose the injury, diagnose the severity of the injury, but also location, uh, and that will guide particularly early days, but all throughout the whole rehab process, um, our protocols in how we strengthen that hamstring um, and our uh, way of conditioning and, and being able to recondition that athlete. So that's number one. If you don't have access to a physiotherapist, make sure to get one yourself in the private sector uh, and have a rehab coach. Tip number two, and within straight away as soon as possible, uh, you, you could even do it if you've just injured it after a game, you want to be loading that hamstring. So um, if a isotonic movements like a hamstring curl uh, are causing you too much pain, then you can do it just a simple eccentric movement if that's causing you too much. So that's just lengthening out the hamstring, like with a hamstring slider. Uh, if that's giving you too much grief and you're not able to maintain the control due to pain, then we can go to an isometric. Um, but ultimately, we want to have the mindset of loading that hamstring um, because the sooner we can restore strength, uh, the better um, we're going to be able to return to high speed and sprint running. So loading it early is really, really important and getting your range of motion back to normal is really, really important. Number three, in week one, we want to maintain as much football load as we can. So what do I mean by that? You um, Jogging and slow speed running isn't a lot of load and it's not high risk for um, a typical hamstring injury. Um, so if you can jog and run pain-free and your gait looks good, continue keeping your running volumes up. So doing some more aerobic type conditioning sessions so you're not losing that um, overall conditioning. If uh, ground balls, marking the ball and kicking has no issues at all, no setbacks, then keeping those kicking loads in and movements like ground balls um, is really, really important. Also change of direction, particularly lateral work. So power cutting, shuttles, things like that. Uh, we want to maintain that strength work in because that's really important for your glutes and your groins and your adductors. Week two, we want to start now progressing the speed that you're running at um, while you're starting to hit your strength markers. So hopefully after loading it quite regularly every day you know, with, from a strength point of view um, or at least every second day from a strength point of view, you, you might have some objective markers like using a Nord board to be able to see the symmetry between your hamstrings uh, and see how well your eccentric strength is coming back to pre-injury. Um, typically, we would like to see that get close to within 90% of your pre-injury hamstring score before we would be doing high-speed running, so uh, sorry, uh, sprinting. So we want to make sure we're getting that strength back. If you've got that strength, then in week two, we're absolutely building out some form of straight line running where you're doing some run-throughs like flying 80s, for example, where you've got a 30-meter build, and you might have a 30-meter speed where you're trying to hit that speed. It might be 80% of velocity. And then we have a 20-meter decel, for example. So that's where we're just starting to expose the hamstring to now some higher velocities. Week two, we also want to start. Um, so by this point, your clinical markers and your strength markers should hopefully be clear. Um, and we're starting to progress the intensity of the content that we did in week one. Um, by this stage as well, we're hoping in the gym your strength markers have all been hit and then that's where we move into week three where now we're integrating back into the football program. Uh, so your main training session at your club, um, you're aiming to hit uh, anywhere between 85 and 90% of your max velocity in this week and we're doing some hard acceleration, so 5, 10, 15 metre hard axles. Um, so that's where you're in that stretch position leaning forward with your torso uh, and you're really focusing on quick switches into the ground, so you're dynamically um, producing force at a rapid rate. Um, and we're also being able to stop on a dime, pumping the brakes with your D cells. Then opens you up to the la the final week where you return to play in week four. So you've completed a full um, main training session. You've hit above ninety percent of max velocity. You've hit all your strength markers. Uh, and you're feeling like you've um, done enough football to be able to return back to performance. So hopefully that makes sense in that um, three-week block uh, and how we would periodize things. 
Um, obviously, we want to take into account, like I said, the site of the injury. So work closely with a professional. Also, when you're doing your football drills, if you're a rehab coach listening to this, think about the position that that athlete plays. So obviously, the, the football content you put in there will be specific to that player. So if they're an inside mid, you'll be doing some contested ground balls, um, some repeat efforts. If they're doing, if they're an aerial player, make sure they're getting that contested um, find a body one on one v one um, marking work. 